Now that I've got my score set up, now this is just for the melody. So you have to look and see where the melody is. Most likely it's in the right hand part of the piano and decide how much of the melody you want to write out. Sometimes you have to write the whole thing out. Sometimes it repeats. So you'll have to use your musicality there. And when you begin writing, you look at the beginning. We've already set out our key and time signature. So then you have to think, what is that first note? In many cases, it'll be something simple like a crotchet. But do think carefully about how you put in your notes. If you were drawing this by hand, you could put in what looks like a crotchet and draw a beam across it. But you have to be thinking like a musician at this point, and you have to put these in as what they are, which is quavers. Let me show you. So the first note you will put in is a crotchet, and as soon as you've got that rest highlighted, it will defer to whichever you have chosen. I go to note entry and I put it in there. I can also hit the D on my keyboard and that will put it in, which can make things go faster. So for my next two A's, I'm gonna hit the letter A on my keyboard. Now let's put the octave too low, but there's a handy little trick here for you. If I click the note and arrow up, it only goes up by a semitone, but I'm gonna hold control, arrow up, do the same with the next one, and now I've got my notes in the right octave. That may or may, may or may not make things easier for you. You can do that with single notes, or you can do that with entire bars. So if you want to change the octave, control, arrow up. I'll continue to write this melody in now. The next is, this is going to be a quaver. So if I choose quaver from the start, that first note there will become a quaver. What was that pitch again? B. So I'm going to continue to use my letters, C, D, B, and then the next one is a half note or a minim. Now, if I hit escape twice, it takes me out of that, and I can hear what I've done. Fantastic. So now I'll complete the rest of the melody by typing the rest of those notes in, either by putting them in where they look visually, so whether they're on the third line or the third space, um, or by knowing what the note names are. I can hit R to repeat a whole bar, if that makes it easy, because the next bit is really, really symbol similar. And there, I've got my entire melody in, making sure I save my work. MuseScore will sort it out on which lines you want it to go on. If you are uh, fastidious about how you want it laid out, you can choose the bar, hit Enter, and that will automatically set that in there. You can always delete that and let MuseScore do its work. So that's how you put in the melody. The last part is to put in the chords that will help you later. That's as easy as pie. Chords are already there, so I hit Control K, K for chord, it isn't really, but C means something else. And I can actually probably arrow my way right through. I know that's a G chord. Yeah, and I just hit the space bar, and oh, I missed it. When you don't put another chord in, that means that that chord carries on, so that's still going to be a D chord. You only put in chord names when they change. And there we go. And again, making sure I save my work. Now I've got my melody written out in MuseScore. I can play it to see that it works with all the chords ready to go for variation number one.